Okay, I think what we'll do is start. I won't let anybody join us. It's a busy night, Baruch Hashem. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Suzanne. Hello, everybody. Oh, lovely to have everybody with us and lovely to have Elaine on Simon's phone. We've got Chaya, Matt, Chaya, so thank you for sharing faces, as we say, and we hope that our speaker tonight is going to take herself also off. Uh... <laughs> uh, I wonder how that would work, actually, Chava. You know, everywhere else puts their faces. And um, I have to tell you, in the early days of Zoom, in the early days of Zoom, it was really quite bizarre because, um, you know, it was, we didn't even know what we were doing. And um, I actually used to do a, um, a parasha class every single night for a girls' program, um, but every night. And it was on the on the telephone. So I would record something and send it to them. And it was like, I never knew if there was nobody there or if there was anybody there. Sorry, there's just somebody at my door. So I never knew, I literally never knew if there was anybody listening or 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 few people listening. And then one day at least I did find out that there actually were people that were listening. But I would say, hello, one day you might not recognize me, but you'll hear my voice and my accent. And at least there's got to be something that's a little bit um, distinguishing. So welcome back, welcome back. Good Chaydesh, good Chaydesh. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, we're going to learn tonight, hopefully one of the lessons that we have to um, do a little bit of work on. But um, yeah, we've just got to keep on reaching for the stars and uh, just davening. And really in the zechus of what we're going to learn tonight, Let's just all have in mind that Kaddish Baruch should just say Mashiach. We should have refers, we should have Yeshua's for all of Klal Yisrael, for all of Klal Yisrael. And there should be Nechama. Nechama, I messaged uh, Rebetzin um, Riegler today to ask her to meet with somebody. And I said, but how are you? And she said, to tell you the honest truth, we, we are in a place of semi, of semi, semi availus, we semi mourning. You know, it's like here we are, they live in Kataman. They have three families, you know, that are, are sitting shiva for sons, fathers, brothers. So, you know, it's just too much, really. So, in Hashem, we should take the the, nechama, the comfort from, from our Torah and from our learning and just always be aspiring. So, Hava, thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And I'm going to hand over to you. Kodesh Tov, everybody. And uh, thank you to Joanne and all the people involved in SEED who I think it's incredible and all the amazing women that come and join this program and you know a busy Friday especially with a, a busy Friday short Friday tomorrow people are still making time to learn Torah and please God in the Zachus all the soldiers should come home safely all the hostages should be released and um and there should be and there should be peace there should be peace in Eretz Israel and around the world what I thought about I talk about today it's Parashas Noah. We all speak about Noah and the floods, and it's always relevant because it's usually raining, although the weather in London has been fantastic the last few weeks. Um, really not too bad at all for Sukkot. The last, there's just nine Pesukim at the end of Parashas Noah, which talks about the Doha Flogger, the generation of the dispersion. No one knows what that is. I don't know. Doha Flogger is fine as well. I was thinking to myself, like, what is that little story stuck on at the end of Parshas Noach, and what can we learn from it? And what's really fascinating is it's so hard to tell from reading the story what it is that the Doha Flogger did wrong. What did they do wrong? So if anybody wants to see, um, I'm going to be sharing my screen, but if anybody wants to um, see the handout, you should be able to see the handout in the chat. If um, if you can't see it, somebody maybe can, whoever's the admin, can repurpose uh, the can put the chat can put it back in the chat you should be able to print it out some people really like having that by all means interrupt ask me things uh challenge what i say i'm happy or if i don't make something clear probably if you didn't understand it probably someone else also didn't understand it so don't feel bad to ask 
please, I encourage audience participation if people like it. So what I'm going to do now is we're just going to read the, the story, just literally skim through the story. And then what I want you to do is think at the back of your mind. You're welcome to interrupt if you want to say anything. Please keep yourself muted, but unmute if you want to say anything. Question is like this. What did these, what did these people do wrong? We're going to read the story in a minute. If they did something wrong, what was it? What were they concerned about? What were they trying to achieve? Where did they come from? Where did they settle? And what building materials did they have? And the other thing you want to be looking out for is repeated words. Like what words keep creeping back into the story? That's what we're going to do. Here we go. Here's the story. Okay, this is, it's in Boratius, Yud Aleph, and it's just the last um, nine for, ten for Sukkim. Okay, and the whole world was had one language and one word. I'm not going to translate Devorim Achadim. It's a very complicated thing to translate, and we'll talk about it later. And I think that's the key to understanding the entire story. Okay, because Devorim is in the plural, Achadim comes from the word Echod. And how can Echod be in the plural, Achadim? Bit of a strange things. We'll just translate it as Devorim Achadim for the moment. Possible base. Vayhi benos on mikedem, and it was when they journeyed from Kedem. Vayim seu vikar, and they found a valley beeretz Shinar in the land of Shinar. Vayeshvu sham, and they settled there. Possible gimel. Vayomru ishal reehu, and each man said to his friend, Hava nilbene levenim, venisrafa lestrefa. Let's us brick bricks. Let's make bricks for and burn burnings. Let's. Make like a, an oven to bake bricks. And bricks were like stone and like mortar. was like mortar. Dalad. And they said, Let's build ourselves a city. And it's ta a tower with its, with its head in the heaven. And let's make ourselves a name. Pen or foots al pene kol ha'orets, lest we be spread out across the whole earth. By Yered Hashem and Hashem came down, Liros es ha'ir to see the city, the es ha'migdol and the tower Asher bonu bnei Adam that the children of man or the children of Adam had built. Vov, just gonna scroll up in the. Should be. You should. Can you see the screen? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Vov. Vayomer Hashem and Hashem said. These are one people with one language, the Kulam, all of them got the same language. And this is what they start to do. And now, uh, nothing will be held from them, we be withheld from them what they propose to do. Uh, what are we up to, Zion? Hovon Neridot, this is Hashem speaking. Let's go down. This is a bit complicated because how can Hashem be speaking to other people? So it could be the angels, okay? Uh, it's another subject for another time. The Novla Shom Safasam, and let's mix up their language. Asher lo Yishma'u Ish Safas Re'ehu, that they may not be able to hear or understand each other's language. Ches. Vayofet Hashem Osom Mishom. And Hashem spread them out from there. Pe al pene kol ha'oretz upon the face of all the earth. By yachdalu live no sa'ir, and they stopped building the city. Al kein karash shama bovel. That's why that place was called bovel. Ki shom balal Hashem because there Hashem confused the language. Al kol ha'asvas kol ha'oretz, the language of all the earth. Umishom hefit som Hashem. Al Pane Kol Ha'oret, and there Hashem spread them out across the whole land. Anyone seen anything? Do anyone done anything wrong here? Anybody got any comments to say what they do wrong? Just want to say the last pasuk in this little section is the very last pasuk, which is Elev told of shame. These are the generations of shame. This is the progeny of shame. Shame ben Maas Shana by Yoled es Aprachshad Shnasayim Acha. Hamabul, and he gave birth to um, Ahapachshad. Okay, any comments? Anybody wants to tell me? What did they do wrong? Is it, can we read the meaning, the simple meaning of the text? Can anyone tell me, it's a challenge, what is it 
that these people did wrong, that Hashem was so upset that he came down and spread them out and stopped them doing what they were doing. Anybody want to um, volunteer? A lack of trust. It, how, where can you see that sukkim? Um, well, they wanted to reach Hashem, didn't they? Where does they, it say that? Them. Uh, I haven't, and no, let me just tell you, where are we, where are we? Where okay, are we? sukkim. All they're saying is, and Dalad, yeah. how about his, let's make bricks, that's what they said, and Gimel, let's make bricks, Yeah. and let's make a ta let's make a fire, and let's make bricks, and then let's, they just said, Let's build a city, and its its and its top should be in in the in Bashamayim. Is that an Avera? They could try. <laughs> What's wrong with building a tower? If you don't have time, I know someone's written something in the chat. I can't monitor the chat, so if someone else sees something that's like, relevant to me, let me know. But I I can't. It's too many things to look at all at the same time. I've got to keep my eyes on the handout and the chat. Um, I challenge you. When you go to shul on Shabbos morning, if you hear the Kriya Satora, if you look at it tonight, the simple meaning of the text, it's very, very challenging to see what it is. So we've got many, many Mahmari, um, Chazal telling us, lots of rabbis tell us lots of different things. There's loads of things that, because it's so confusing, we look at the story, it doesn't look like they've done anything wrong at all. So why is it that they get called like terrible people, had to share, had to spread them out? You know, at least they weren't destroyed like the flood. Okay. So let's now let's look at the story again, but with a very fine tooth comb, looking carefully for a close reading, looking at the words and where are Hazal getting this idea from that they were trying to build a tower to reach Hashem, to rebel against Hashem. There are loads of ideas that they were um, they were doing idol worshipping. It doesn't say they and there they worshipped an idol. None of that's written in the story. It's hiding in plain sight. So we're going to look again at the story, read it again, but with a fine tooth comb to see where Chazal gets their, get their ideas from. So let's start. Okay, so again, one. And the whole world was one language and and, and one words. We're going to talk about one words in a minute. Okay, Pasuk base. Right, and when they came to, they came, it came to pass, they journeyed from Kedem. Anyone know the word Kedem? Let me tell you where you've heard the word Kedem. There's another person later on in the, in the Torah who journeys from Kedem, and that is Lot. Okay. And um, if you want to look that up, it is in Boratius Yud Aleph Posuk Base. I think it's base, Yud Aleph Base. No, Vayivcha Lo Lot. Lot, when he separated from Avram, decided where he was going to go. Vayisa Lot, and Lot journeyed from Kedem. And Lot journeyed from Kedem. So is Kedem a place? Or is Kedem an ideology? So we, when we say um, that, when we say Amida, we say Ukshonim Kadmonios, like we say, like days of old. But Hashem is known as Kadmon Shalolom. If somebody's journeying Mikedem, it means midrashically that he's journeying away from Hashem, from Hashem who was the first, who was Kadmon Shalolom. Okay, the rush bomb is very fascinated. And he wants to know, what is it that the Doha Flogger did wrong? So let us scroll down to, okay. This is another question I've got to ask you. If you wanted to build a very tall tower that you wanted to reach the heaven, where would you pick on earth to build that tower? Geographically, where's a good place? Do you think the Dead Sea? Mountain. A mountain. Where did they build the tower? Look what it says. In um, in Posuk base, here's the word. Oops. Vayibsa'u vika. And they found a valley. Why do you think they built their very tall tower in a valley? Shall I tell you why? This is what Chazal are doing. They're looking so carefully at the words. And they're saying, well, why would you build a tower in a valley? That doesn't make sense. Why did they build a tower valley? Because they thought to themselves, we're going to build a tower. It's going to be us. We're going to use our own power and our own koach. We don't need any help from Hashem and his world. We don't need to get a head start by having a tower, by building a tower on, on, a, on a mountain. We're going to build it on a valley because we don't need Hashem's help. Okay. What was their big sin, according to the Rashbam? Source, um, source C, if you want to follow on over here. Okay. The Rashbam says, 
The people said, Hovar nivne lonu ir, let's build a city. And he says, Lefi hapshat, machatu dahavlogo. What did they do wrong according to the simple meaning of the text? Elo lefi shet sivom hakorish barhu. Hashem gave a command to the people and again to Noah when he left the ark. And he said, Karu uruvu umilu es haaretz. Be fruitful and multiply and spread out across the earth. That was their command. Now, what was their big worry? They kept saying, pen our foot. We were so scared that we're going to be spread out. They did, the, they did the exact opposite of Hashem's command. They didn't want to spread out for whatever reason. We're going to come to that very, very shortly. In Posset Gimel. Vayomru ish el re'ehu. And each pan said to themselves, let's brick bricks and burn burnings. We're going to talk about this like weird hypnotic language. Hova nil bener levein. I'm going to go back up, sorry, to Posset Gimel. Okay, here we are. In, in Hebrew, it's just unbelievable. Look how repetitive for the people who are, have got good Hebrew knowledge. Hova, come on, let's all do this. Idea of like some sort of mob mentality. Drag everybody in with this, okay? Nilbana levenim. Let us brick bricks. Obviously, it means to make bricks, but it's so hypnotic. It's trying to convince people. It's almost like um, a very good orator who's like trying. Venistrafalistrafa. Let's burn burnings. Okay, vatihilahem halavena la even. And they use bricks as stone. We're going to talk about the amazing ability to make bricks, which is man's ability to manufacture rather than using stones, which were God's God-given stones, sort of like granite occurs naturally. There's lots of hypnotic language, very big emphasis on the technological advances of society at the time. They kept saying, hover, let's, let's, let's. A gang, mob mentality, which is unbelievable, where somehow if there's some sort of hypnotic language and everybody's doing it and everyone's involved, People get sucked in, even if it's for good or for bad. Just think how amazing you can influence someone and say, hey, I went to a really, really cool share on Thursday night. You should listen next Thursday night. Try and convince your friends. But also, unfortunately, people can convince their friends to do things um, not for um, not for a good reason. Possum Dalad. Here they go. Let us build a city. Oh, sorry. Let us build a city. Let us build a city and a tower. V'na'ase lonu shame. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered. Can I ask you a question? Has anybody seen any names of any of the characters in the story? Any names of any characters except for the very last verse, which talks about shame? Any story, any characters in the story? Well, I'll tell you, the answer is no. They're so busy trying to make a name for themselves. And, um, but they don't, but they don't, there's no, but nobody's named in the whole story. We don't even know the name of the king. I mean, Drash tells us maybe Nimrod, okay? The people desperately try to make a name for themselves, but no names are mentioned. A bit ironic. The other thing is they keep saying the word shom, shom and shame. Um, I, I should have highlighted it, but if you look in the story, as we go along, pay attention where they say, na se lonu shame. Okay, so here's the word shame. I could probably do this as a highlighting, but they also say, by Yeshvu Shom, there's lots of shames and shoms, okay? They've got a very big worry. They're terrified they're going to be scattered. Ironically, of course, Noah's son is called shame, and we're called Semites because we're all shame. We're all um, like shame at Ava, and we are part of Nesrol, which we are shame, shame. So there's a lady who, um, uh, she lives in Israel. She's originally from America. Her name's Judy Klitzner. And she's written a book called Subversive Sequels in the Bible. And she quotes a man whose name, who is a book from 2014 called um, The Narrative, Narrative Art in Genesis. And he says, how ironic Hashem is almost making fun of this generation. He says, they wanted a name. People want a name. Well, they can have a name. But how different it will be from the name they dreamt of. What did they get called? Bovel, babble, okay, M a muddle. This unexpected turn is like a judgment, so biting its sarcasm. They want a name, there's no names mentioned. They do get a name, but they get called Bovel. Not quite the name they were looking for. Look what it says in Possum Dialogue. 
Vanaase Lonu Shame, and let us make a name for ourselves. The Safarno comments on this in source, four, source D. What's so bad about wanting to have a name? The Safarno says, this name, whatever, Vanaase Lonu Shame, this name was an idol that was going to be placed in the tower. Where did Hazal get this idea from? What's wrong with having a name? Okay. In Parshas Mishpotim, if anyone wants to look it up, it's in Shemos, Kaf Gimel, Yud Gimel. It's not on your sheet. Beshem Elohim Acherim Lo Taskiru. And the name of gods of others you shall not mention. There's an idea that shame has got something to do with idolatry. And now here we've got a little scratching at the surface. They want a name. What does that mean? They wanted to have an idolatry. And we've got the Safarno saying they wanted to build a tower and put an idol in the tower. By Yerid Hashem, Hashem came to see what's happening, what the people had built. Okay, and so what does Hashem say? You are one people with one language. What's your language? Rashi tells us. Lush and Hakodesh. That used to be the language everyone had. Now we're going to have to try and understand that very first sentence. The whole world was one people with Devarim Achadim, one words. Can everyone understand what I said? Devarim Achadim. It's plural. Echod is one. How can it be Achadim? How can we have one? It doesn't make sense. This unlocks the whole story for us. Rashi gives us a few explanations. Source F. First explanation. Ba'u ba'etza achas. They came with one advice, one idea. Va'omru. Lo kol heimenu shayavar lo es ha'elionim. Na'ale l'rakia v'na'ase imo milchama. Hashem has got no right to pick the whole heavens for himself. It's all exclusive for him. Let's go up to the skies and make war. Make war with Hashem. This is what their idea was. They all had a united, how lovely they're united, but just in a very stupid purpose. By the way, according to the Ravionish and Ibshitz, you should not think that these people were stupid and they thought they could build a tower that reached heaven. They had some idea, according to him, that they would get to a place where there would be no gravity and they would then be able to reach a height where they could, which is very interesting, because such a long time ago, they had this idea, that's according to Rev. Yonis and Ibshitz. Another idea Rashi brings. Devarim achadim. Another explanation. Dovar acha al yechido shel olam. One, one, one words. They were trying to say there's got to be this one being, which is Hashem. And they wanted to say the words referring to the, uh, the, the devarim, the words referring to achod, echod, Hashem echod. So they were trying to do something which was to, to say that Hashem was not the only one being in the universe. Another opinion, according to Rashi, the word achodim, get rid of the Allah for the beginning, chodim means sharp, sharp words. What were the sharp words they said? This is a Midrash, Bereshish Rabba. Omru achas v'le'elef b'sheish me'os chamishim shana, b'sheish shanim, harakia mitmotet. The sky is going to wobble. They were so worried after the flood. They figured this is something, an event that happens. Blame it on nature. And it happens every 1,656 years. So what we're going to do is we're going to put up supports to stop the rain coming down and to stop the world being flooded again. Maybe they wanted to be able to not stop Hashem, to, to prevent Hashem from stopping the water or having control over the water so they could have water whenever they liked. And certainly they didn't want to be dependent on Hashem for rain. They didn't even want to be dependent on Hashem to build their their uh, big tower that they wanted to reach the heavens by using the, the, the mountain as an advantage. Which is amazing when you think about it, because they just tried, they didn't even think too much about the consequences. They had no idea. They never took into consideration what would happen if they got through gravitational fields and how they would be able to breathe with the lack of air and oxygen on a very high level. That's another whole subject for another time. So obviously they did not know what the unexpected consequences of their brilliant planning was that they would like manage to float up to the galaxies. Who knows? Okay. Possuk Zion. 
Hashem comes, they had one language, and Hashem says, I'm going to stop them doing what they're doing. I am going to mix up their language, that people, they won't be so united. Before they were united, wonderful to be united, reunited, you might think. Let's look more carefully at the story, and we're going to see if these people were really united. And Hashem scattered them across the face of the earth. They wanted to be together. Hashem scattered them. They wanted a name, they got a name, but not the quite the name they wanted. Now I'd like to focus, I'm just going to stop if anybody wants to say anything, and then I'm going to move on. Okay, I'd like to focus on this absolute and utter obsession about bricks. Okay, because at Gimel, each person said to themselves, let's brick bricks and burn burnings. And what does Rashi tell us? Source I. For there are no stones in Bovel, which is a valley. Okay, so people couldn't, in ancient times, if you think about it, they used to build, they used to either live in a cave or they used use the stones that were there and build a stone home until they later on developed the technology to build things out of wood and bricks. But before that, they only used the, just the raw materials that were in the world at that time. Now, here we have this idea of technology and a technological advances. So we say that Noah was the first person to build, to, to develop the plow and to make things happen in the world with having um, amazing technology. The people of the Doha Flogger, it seems to me, according to the most of the Marmari Chazal, is that the people had a distorted sense of self, an overestimation of their own importance and power. They had societal egocentricism, egocentrism. And this eventually leads to a denial of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a denial of Hashem. As man, human beings misconstrue their own ability and their own power vis-a-vis -vis Hashem in the universe. Do not view idolatry as bowing down to a stone statue. Idolatry can also be an ideology, which begins with human beings viewing themselves in a manner inconsummate to objective reality. The people at the time had got this new technology of ability to make bricks. So they thought, we don't need God. We don't need his, we, don't, we can live in a valley. We don't need to live in a tower. If we want to build a tower, we don't need to live in a mountain. We don't need God. We don't need his stones. Because now we can take, make and take clay. They don't realize they're taking the clay, which Hashem has brought us as well. And, you know, people used to like live in tents made of animal skin. Now they've got a whole new level of ability. Why are Hazal saying there's idolatry? There were no idols. There were no physical representations of, of gods of others. They were just building a city and a tower. And this teaches us a very important insight into what is reality, what is idolatry, okay? And so as the post-flood society developed, became cohesive, so it seems to be, they became advanced. They were naturally creative. They, were, they had like creative drives. They had ambition and this desire to create great. They tried to build bricks. But when you use your creative desire and you think to yourself, and you're overestimating yourself, so you distance yourself from Hashem. And ultimately, you undermine um, Hashem. And um, Rabbi Yosef Chaim Sonnenfeld, who was the chief rabbi and the founder of the Eda Haredis in Yerushalayim, who passed away in 1932, he says, the fact they were using bricks is unbelievable. It's a massive technological breakthrough. This gave them a feeling of power and they thought they had control over their own fate. And this is a big mistake. And this is a form of idolatry. How did Hashem punish them? They couldn't understand what the other one was says. What was going on? Rashi's telling us the Midrash. One worker said to his friend, Hi, could you do me a favor? Can you get me a brick? And the other person brought him some plaster because he didn't understand what he was asking them. And because the first person who asked the brick didn't get a brick, he went absolutely bonkers and he split open his brains. He like attacked him and split open his brains. 
that's like mind boggling. They're so obsessed with building the building project is the only thing that they needed to do. And human beings seemed quite dispensable because if someone didn't bring you something and they couldn't understand what you what you wanted, suddenly you were no longer useful in terms of the building project. Look what the Repirke de Rabielli has to say. It's another Midrash. Lo ha yusham avonim liv no ses ha ir ve es ha mikdol. Maha yu are sin. There were no stones, so they they built they they couldn't build the they couldn't build the city. What did they do? Ha yu mal benim levenim ve sorf oso. They made they baked bricks and they burnt them in a kiln. Im no fal adam umes. If a human being fell and died, lo samim es libomalov. They couldn't care less. They didn't pay the slightest bit of attention. Bricks were the, were the that was the raison d'etre. The whole reason you lived was for the building project and for bricks, because that's what it was all about. Everything was about bricks. One second. Lost something. Give one second. Paper. Right, got it back. If one brick would fall and break, one brick broke, they would start crying and crying. When are we going to get another brick? When are we going to get another brick? We need another brick. How absolutely awful. What a lack of value of human life and prioritizing the building of the tower and bricks over human life. This, what is this Midrash trying to tell us? These people got it so wrong. So it seems to us on the surface that these people had tremendous unity. They were building a project. Come on, everybody, we're building a project. So obsessed with building a project that if a human being brought you the wrong thing, you would just kill him. And if a brick fell, we'd all start crying. Where are the priorities for the people? So when we've got the words, Vanishrafa Lestrafa, we've got this idea that bricks were very important, but human beings were not important at all. The Ha'emek Dava tells us something which I think is incredibly insightful. Okay, it's source L. That's it. A whole different approach to the Daha Flava. What was their big worry? That they would be spread out and scattered over all the earth. The Haimek Dava says the following. What would be so bad if someone went somewhere else, if they were spread out? What's the big worry here? This is what Devarim Achadim is all about. Because not all human beings have got the same ideology and they don't have the same thought process, they thought that nobody else was allowed to have any difference of opinion to what the opinion was of the people who were building the tower. Everyone had to be there in the same place. No one's allowed to be scattered. No one's allowed to be different. What's going on here? Let's look what else the Hermit McDonald says. Then it's it. Uh, somebody might have a different opinion. Um, and they might have a different opinion to what the people who are building the tower say. They didn't want anyone to leave their commune. Now we've got a completely different understanding of what's going on here with the Dor HaFlaga. And anyone who departed or deviated from this Tvarim Achadim, the one words that the people had, the one ideology that the people had at the time, 
Mishpotolis Shrefa, they would be burnt. Remember we spoke about the bricks? Hava Nivnelanu, uh uh Nivnelanu, um let me read it. I don't prefer to, I don't want to quote misquote. Okay. Okay. Uh sorry, Hava Nivna Nilbana Levanim, the Nisrafat Lisrefa. What did that Emek Dava say? They used to burn people who didn't behave if anyone didn't follow their ideology. So now we you know what's, what's going on here. They're obsessed with bricks. And they had these fires, which are furnaces, where they would just, anyone would be thrown into the fiery furnace, which Avram Avinu was thrown into the fiery furnace. Kashe, Kashe Osula Avram Avinu, like Avram Avinu, what happened to Avram Avinu. The Nimsa, and we find, Hoyu Dvorim Achadim Shebeinehem, this fantastic one unity, the words that they had together, it was Leroetz, it was an impediment. Shechlutu laharog esmi shelo yachshov ladata. Anybody who didn't toe the line or follow the ideology that the people who built the tower had, what was this tower? It wasn't a tower to build themselves a name. It was a watchtower. It was like, we are going to have we're going to basically be guarding, you know, if you've only seen like uh, programs on television, you've got like a, a, a like a like a concentration camp, something like that. You have like this light that flashed over the whole night to check if prisoners tried to escape. That's what's going on here. They built this tower. Whoever's building the tower, it's it's almost like a commune that no one else was allowed to leave. What's so ironic is we have the story of the Daha flogger and we have at the, at the end of the Midrash puts Avram Arvinu at walking past the tower and it says Avram the son of Terah passed and he noticed the building of the tower okay why these people Avraham was Avraham Ha'ivri the other Avraham had a different ideology and a different understanding a different philosophy from the rest of the world at that time the people who lived in the tower the people who built the tower were all identical it was like it was it was like everyone had to think alike. No one was allowed to think out of the box. Everyone had to do what the people before said. Everyone had to do. That's why Avram was put in the fire furnace because he said to Terach, "I don't believe in idols." And this uh, Terach sent him to um, to Nimrod. And he was put in a fire. There was this. I would dare say a communist society. No one was allowed to think of any. No one was allowed to think for themselves. And dare I say it? The idea that people were burnt or they don't care about human beings. They care more about bricks shows that they did not value human life. The project was important, individuals were unimportant, and human beings were dehumanized. And this is terrible. And it makes me think a lot about um, Germany, where they had the Stasi, who would like be the state security service at the time of the, um, the GDR or, or, or DDR, whatever you want to call it, where it was great, everyone had a great life, but basically it was all great because you have like, certain things you'd have some privileges but you weren't allowed to leave if you dared try to cross over to the west you'd be shot this reminded me a lot about a book that i studied when i was in school and that's animal farm all animals are equal some are more equal than others for people who are not familiar with the story it's a story about a group of animals who rebel against the human farmer hoping to create a society where all animals can be equal free and happy ultimately the rebellion is betrayed and the farm ends up in a state as bad as it was before, but it's under the dictatorship of a pig. And he says, this work, the work is strictly voluntary, but any animal who absented himself from it would have his rations reduced by half. Well, it's not so voluntary. We can see that the Daha flogger was not um, so voluntary. No one believes more firmly than Comrade Napoleon that all animals are equal. He would be only too happy to let you make decisions for your sons, but sometimes you might make the wrong decisions, comrades. And then where should we be? Okay, let's think about it. What's going on here? Another thing reminding me a, a lot about Germany. I had a very um, interesting experience. I went to Berlin, and I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try and make this big so you can see it. This is um, a memorial that is in Berlin. Now I don't know if you can tell from here, but if you want to look it up afterwards. It's called the Empty Library, and it was an installation that was installed in the middle of Berlin. And 
it's on this is floor level so what you see is completely floor level and there's a sheet of glass on the floor can you see the sheet of glass and if you can possibly see from the video from the picture if you like lay, lie down on the floor and put your head and look in the sheet of glass you can see underneath the sheet of glass is um uh, it's on four sides you can't see from the picture are bookcases now this is and the, and the bookcases are all empty and it's a memorial dedicated to the remembrance of the Nazi book burnings that took place in Berlin in May 1933. And it's it's so moving because if we are not allowed to have books, we are not allowed to share ideas. No one's allowed to have a different ideology. And that was part of the, uh, you know, the Nazi philosophy to stop people having their own ideas and sharing. No one could be different. Everyone had to be pure area. No one was allowed to be different in any way, shape or form. I hope as you, if you read the story again, or if you're in Shulon Shabbos, you'll be thinking to yourself, wow, on the surface, it looks like nothing's wrong. But Chazal had a very clear understanding and a very clear reading with a fine tooth comb. So let's just recap some of the things we spoke about. On the surface, looks like they did nothing wrong. What could be so bad? But we have to do everything we can to preserve the uniqueness of each person, each individual, each human being is worthy of living. And everyone has a unique contribution and has to, to bring their unique contribution into the world. And everyone can contribute in their own way, according to their talents, if you're artistic, if you're musical, if you're mathematical, if you're good at languages, whatever you're good at, contribute to the world. If you're good at making colors, Joanne, not my department, what I'm saying is make colors. Make food for other people if you're good. If you're good at looking after kids, look after kids. Whatever you can do. The world is diverse. Diversity, okay? It's the one thing we all have in common. Celebrate it every day. So I'll just recap. Idolatry is not just bowing down to stone and wood. Idolatry can be something if somebody is, has sees themselves in an inflated way vis-a-vis HaKadosh -vis Baruch We are not. We owe everything we have to Hashem. Technology at the time, the breakthroughs in technology led people to believe that they could manage alone. And unfortunately, people think that today because we've got, you know, again, with a group, anything's achievable. Look what they did. They built this amazing tower and they all worked together. How fantastic is that? They used it for a bad purpose. How amazing if we do hover, hover, you encourage other people to do amazing things. They didn't think of the consequences of their actions. If even if they thought they could like beat the gravitational field, then how are they going to live in the air? They didn't think about it. Don't be afraid to be Avraham or Ivri. You can be the one Aver. If everyone else is doing the wrong thing, you can think your own thoughts. We're not all supposed to be identical. And um, every story in the Torah has, has a purpose. And this story looks like, in inverted commas, not much is going on. And we can't, like, people don't even pay attention to this little part of the story. It's like tucked in at the way at the end of Parshas Noah. But I hope that everybody feels they've got a bit of a clearer insight and a little bit uh, a bit of food for thought or a bit of bricks for thought um, to share over Shabbos. Thanks. Chava. Thank you. Thanks. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Chava. You know what? I think that I think that that is really the main thing that one of the things that um, we had even on, on share this morning that Rebbe Nachman says, you know, what what is maybe it was no, it wasn't. It was actually the Yanuka who said on Rosh Hashanah that we also we're going to be judged not really only for who we are like now, but really who we want to be. And and I think that that is really also one of the things of, of the Jewish people. You know, we might not all be perfect or not all there exactly yet, uh, but we're working on it and we're growing with it. Um, and therefore every little bit that we can do um, and learn from and and create a, a, new, a new idea and create something which is, you know, there for us to say, you know what, every single day, every time there's something else mm -hmm. that we really can grow from and learn. So thank you. And I hope we all make sure that we do utilize um, our potentials and remind ourselves that each and every one of us had that, that different place. So we should be thinking about where we want to be going to. I just want to quickly um, uh, mention a refer of a friend who had surgery this morning that I actually whoop, that I meant to mention before. 
and I should know all these names, but I'm not, I'll get there. Um, and it's Sarah Baskettle Handel, together with all of Kalalia Style, together with all of our um, our soldiers and all of our hostages, should have refers, assures, and our Kaddish Baruch Hu should really bring us to the place where we need to be. So I, I ran in literally, and I put my screen on before because that's a trick that I've learned now. You're going to come into the mm-hmm. share, don't start fiddling with your computer when it doesn't want to listen to you. So I leave my Zoom um, open and ready, and we had our Fasha Skala for another friend, and um, and I have my second dough. So this is the sandwich dough. So we have to know that we, we do our very best not to miss out. And also, I'm just going to mention right now, is that Be'ezor Hashem in two weeks' time, and that is Thursday the 14th of November, I think it will be, uh, oh, we're going to have a big Hafrasha Schala, a unity, bracha, simcha, and everything at um, Hasmonean Girls School. And it is also the eve of the Shabbos project. But it should be something, our Shabbos project is every Shabbos. Uh, but it's something that we have to remind ourselves that all the time. So I thought a waste of opportunity, you can't let go. So we're getting um, on the wheels. So you haven't yet seen or whatever anything yet, but put it in and anybody that wants to help is welcome to. Okay. Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher Kiddishanu. Vemitzvaisa Vitzivanu. La Fish Chala. Min ha'isa, are zu chala, and really in the zuchus of this mitzvah, the fashas chala, and I have here sitting in front of me because we haven't met since. Um, I don't think we've had a share since, but our dear beautiful Lily Ebert should have an aliyah and a shamas, and uh, she's just got that beautiful, comforting smile that just says, "Never give up, never lose hope, and just keep on going and keep on doing." So that's what we do, and I'm very proud of each and every one of you that come here, Father, like you say, because, you know, sometimes I think, oh, really, Thursday, everybody really want to come here, and I think, oh, and no, you know what, while we're here, we keep doing, because there's a lot more to do, and Mashiach's coming soon, we don't have much time to waste, you know, we really, really, really don't have time to waste, and uh, who knows? Next Shabbos, we could all be baking our chalas for the Kohanim. And that really would be the ultimate joy for each and every one of us. So good Chodesh. It should be a Chodesh of consolidating, a Chodesh of continued growth, and a Chodesh of being mindful of all the things that we really want to achieve. And uh, thank you to everybody. Thanks, Needs. Thanks, Sippy. Thank you, everybody. And Father, thank you again. That was really beautiful. And thank you all for being here. Thank you. 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 Thank you.